Hello, I'm Janet McLaren Bachnight, and I'm a reproductive endocrinologist or a fertility specialist at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. One of the things that I do in my clinic is see cancer patients and counsel them on how their cancer treatment will affect their fertility and also about their options for fertility preservation. Come with me and let's go see some patients together. Hi, Betsy. Hey, yes. Hey, I'm Dr. Vaknight. It's nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm glad you could be here today. Yeah. How can I help? Well, I'm about to start uh, treatment for breast cancer, okay. and I'm wondering about how it's going to affect my ability to get pregnant afterwards. It's something that's really important to my husband and I. Absolutely. This is a really common concern that women have. Um, I see a lot of patients just like yourself for this very reason. Have you already had your first visits with your cancer doctors? Yes. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do is start with first an explanation of how the ovaries work, mm -hmm. and then I'll go into how your treatment might um, harm the function of the ovary. Okay. So women are born with all the eggs we're going to have in our life. Um, at the time you're born, you have about a million eggs, and then as you go through life, they slowly are used up. By the time you go through puberty, you're about to, down to 300,000, and then you go through the rest of those up until menopause. Mm -hmm. So things like chemotherapy or radiation, which may be part of your treatment plan, those are going to wipe out some of the eggs that are left. And so how your fertility is affected really depends on how many you have when you start treatment um, and then exactly what treatment your doctor has planned. So what chemotherapy you're getting and if there's any radiation involved. Okay. Um, like I said, because you're young, you're almost certainly starting out with a healthy number of eggs, which mm -hmm. is a good place to be starting from. Um, you're almost certainly going to be getting some type of chemotherapy, and I can help figure out what drug you're getting, and there's some drugs that are more dangerous than others. And then finally, if there's any radiation that's involved, any radiation that's directed towards the lower part of your belly or the abdomen, um, that may affect the ovaries, mm -hmm. and so that's something that we need to take into consideration. So using those three things, we can kind of figure out you know, how much your ovaries might be harmed and give you a better answer to that question. Okay. Well, knowing that we want to have kids in the future, um, what's something I can do now to help make that a possibility? Sure. So there's sort of different levels of things that you and I can do together. Mm -hmm. um, the first is to do some measurements of the function of the ovaries now and then be able to compare them to how your ovaries are functioning afterwards. Mm -hmm. And this is just watching and seeing what's happening to your body. It doesn't really preserve any fertility, but at least gives you the power of knowing what's been happening to your body and knowing where you are at. Um, so that would be the first option. Mm -hmm. The second option is to use medications to quiet the ovaries. So typically, cancer treatments target the most rapidly dividing cells. Mm -hmm. And if we're able to quiet the ovaries, there's some thought that this helps protect them from the dangers of the chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. um, so that typically is a monthly injection that you would get while you're getting your cancer treatment. Some studies have shown that it does help protect the ovary, and some studies, have, some studies have shown that it's not as protective, um, but it's definitely not harmful, so that's a second option. Mm -hmm. um, the third option, which is the main thing I can offer that preserves fertility, is to actually have you undergo a treatment where we stimulate the ovaries to grow eggs, and then we remove them and freeze them so that they're banked for future use. Um, it's the same treatment that couples going through infertility treatment have done. Mm -hmm. um, it requires two weeks of injections and then a minor surgery under sedation where we harvest the eggs and then freeze them. Um, so those are the three different treatment options and um, I can provide you more information if any of those seem like something you want to explore. Yeah. Well, how will I know if my treatment has affected my ability to get pregnant? The menstrual cycle is a good sign of the function of the ovary. So if your periods come back and you're getting a period every month, mm -hmm. that's a good sign that at least the hormones coming from the ovary are working normally. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that your fertility is normal, and that's a common misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. So if your period comes back, that's a good sign, but still I would recommend sometimes six or 12 months after you're done with your cancer treatment, we can do repeat um, blood tests and even an ultrasound to look at the ovaries and measure and see how they're functioning. Okay. Well, what happens if I go through menopause either during or after my treatment? 
So many women will have their period stop during treatment, and that does not necessarily mean that they're in menopause. If your periods, though, don't come back after your treatment, that is more concerning that because of the treatment you've gone into an early menopause. Again, there's blood work that we would do that would confirm that. And then whether or not you need any treatment for menopause depends on first if you're having any symptoms. Mm -hmm. So women in menopause sometimes have hot flashes or vaginal dryness or memory loss, and those are definitely you know, serious concerns. Um, and can be treated if that's a safe thing depending on the type of cancer that you had and you know with input from your oncologist. Okay. What about some of the costs of these treatments? I mean how much are they going to cost me and will my insurance cover any of it? It's a very important question. So you know visits to a doctor like me to measure the function of the ovaries and see if you're in menopause or any menopause treatment those should all be covered by insurance. Mm -hmm. um, that's regular gynecologic care. When we get to the more advanced fertility treatments, those are things that in the state of Alabama, they are not always covered by insurance. It's always important to check with your own insurance provider because policies can differ um, between insurers. A typical IVF cycle can cost between ten and fifteen thousand dollars. And as you're sitting here thinking about all of the other treatments that you're going to get, that can be a huge price tag. Mm -hmm. It's important to know that there are many programs in place for financial assistance for patients in your exact position. Um, one that we work with is the Sharing Hope program. It's through the Lance Armstrong Foundation. And if you're eligible, it will get you the medications for free. And those medicines can be in the four to $5,000 range. So that's a huge benefit. And then programs like ours discount their laboratory costs down to a price of $5,500. That's still a big bill, um, but it's a much decreased cost from the ten to fifteen thousand dollars that patients typically pay for in vitro fertilization. Well, this is certainly a lot of information. I think I'm going to take it home and discuss it with my husband before we make any kind of decisions about what we're going to do. Sure, this is a lot to think about, and by no means do I think that you can sit here and, and automatically know what the right thing is to do. Um, I see you already have one of our brochures. Mm -hmm. In it, it's going to go through information about the three options we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, because it's so hard to remember everything that we discuss in one of these visits, um, I'm going to also give you this handout here. There are two websites I recommend. The first is called FertileHope.org, and that has that financial assistance program I mentioned, mm -hmm. in case you guys do decide that you want to bank away eggs using IVF. Um, the second website is MyUncleFertility.org, and that's just an excellent resource for patient information. I know your husband couldn't be here today, but you can use that to look um, so that he has a better understanding of these three different things. Okay. And then I'll call you in a few days, and I'm happy to answer any other questions, right. and we can go from there. Well, thank okay. you so much. It's so nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you, too. All right. Thanks. Fertility is a major concern for young women who are facing cancer treatment. In 2006, the American Society of Clinical Oncologists issued a statement stating how important it is for young women facing cancer treatment to have a discussion about the impact of fertility before they start their therapy. Many women will decide not to pursue fertility preservation, but some will decide that they would like to take medications for ovarian suppression or undergo in vitro fertilization to bank eggs or embryos. The good news for those who choose to bank eggs or embryos is that the treatment usually only takes two to three weeks and that studies looking at women who have chosen to bank eggs or embryos have not shown that this harms their success of their cancer treatment. In addition, there are programs that exist that can help to ease the financial burden of these fertility treatments. So please talk to your doctor if you have questions about infertility. And if you need more information, please check out the Fertile Hope website or the MyOncleFertility.com website. Thank you.